Okay, my friends, I got a really good one for you today. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make one of the most valuable fertilizers that can be made, okay? Fish fertilizer. This stuff is so powerful, yet so easy and simple. Anyone can make this. It's free, it, it doesn't require anything special. This is the kind of stuff that we wanna be doing. We don't need to be a slave to the man and go and buy all of our inputs from the store, okay? Those inputs are inferior anyways. What I'm about to show you is ancient wisdom, and this is the best of the best, okay? So, first I'm gonna show you the technique, and then we'll come back in and I'll discuss some of the specifics. Okay, step one is to uh, create your fermentation chamber. Now, immediately you will see here that I have created a homemade airlock. Now, this is not absolutely necessary, okay? but I found it works best because a lot of pressure builds up on the inside of this bucket through the process of the decomposition. So you can make your own airlock, it's very easy. Simply get a section of tubing uh, from the hardware store or the aquarium store or wherever, drill a hole in the top of the bucket that's slightly smaller than the tubing, stuff the tubing through it, put epoxy all around it, and then uh, place the end into a jar of water. And you see I only have it going underneath the bucket or underneath the lid maybe an inch that's about it and I put epoxy all the way around it so it's airtight now what this is going to do is it's going to allow air pressure from the inside of the bucket to escape through the hose and the water is going to allow air to escape from the hose but no air to go back into the bucket you see what I'm saying so you could also, likewise, just go to the winemaking store and get a, a pre-made airlock. Next step is to acquire some fish. And this can be fish from the river, the pond, the ocean, whatever it is. It can be fish heads, fish bones, fish guts. Whole fish is best because it contains everything. But whatever it is, just put them into the bucket. You can cut them up into pieces or just put whole fish into the bucket. Doesn't matter. Okay, now that the fish are in the bucket, okay, you wanna fill the bucket about half full of fish, okay? If you don't have half full, that's fine too. You can just fill just a couple inches in the bottom, that's enough as well, however much fish you have, but don't put more than half the bucket full of fish, okay? Then put a little bit of water in there just so everything's uh, viscous. Then you have to get the leaf mold, okay? So as I've said in my other videos about the other fertilizers, go to the oldest forest in your area, and go to the biggest oldest tree in that area go to the base of that tree clear away the leaves and underneath the leaves you will see a nice dark rich layer of black fluffy material soil it looks like soil but that's leaf mold and the microorganisms in that leaf mold are what we need so we're going to take a handful or two handfuls of that leaf mold and put it into the bucket and those microorganisms that are adapted to our area and to our environment are gonna go to work digesting that fish. Now add two large handfuls of leaf mold to the bucket. And if there's a few leaves here and there, that's fine. If you see on this leaf, you can see the white sort of fuzz looking. That is the fungi. And that's what's going to digest and break down the proteins of this fish for us. Once the fish and the leaf mold are added to the bucket, then you will fill the rest of the way with water up until just a couple inches from the top. Now, I, whenever we're doing anything like this, we always want to try and use rainwater. It has, it's the best. It has all the appropriate stuff that we need and none of the stuff that we don't need. So fill it the rest of the way with rainwater. If you don't have rainwater, tap water works fine. Okay, now pound on the tight-fitting lid and place the bucket, preferably out in the garden somewhere, right next to the crops where, that it's gonna fertilize. Uh, in the sun will help the process all happen a lot quicker, but you can put this anywhere, okay? It can go in a pole barn, in a shed, in a, in a basement even. It actually doesn't smell that much. It, there's a slight odor coming from it from time to time, but this airlock system somehow miraculously filters out most of the smell. Now this bucket is nine months old and I placed whole fish in this bucket, okay? And as you can see, it is liquefying. The microorganisms in the leaf mold are liquefying the proteins and the fats and all the calcium and the bones of the fish. And I have already skimmed off of this stuff multiple times. So when you need some, you just filter it out into a jug, 
uh, filter it through like an old t-shirt that you're obviously not going to wear again. Uh, and then put a little bit more leaf mold and water into the bucket and just let it keep on digesting. It just keeps doing this. All right. The microorganisms know exactly what to do to this stuff to make it a plant available. Okay, now this batch is two years old and it is completely liquefied into plant available, just supercharged nutrients. This is going to nourish anything you put it on. Now we will dilute this one ounce a gallon and water the roots or one ounce a gallon and overhead water. You can foliar with this as well because the plants love the whole balance of diverse microorganisms that exist in this stuff. With this stuff, you don't have to worry about N, P, and K. This has already got the perfect balance of everything, okay? It's filled with nitrogen, also with phosphorus and potassium, and also calcium from the bones. I know it seems crazy simple, and it is, but it's super effective, okay? You see, fish has been used in agriculture for thousands of years. People have known about the benefits of the fish proteins for as long as humans have been farming, all right? They, it used to be... Uh, uh, when fish was really, really plentiful and you lived close to the ocean and things, they would take fish scraps and bury them in the ground uh, with the plant that they would plant. Native indigenous cultures would do that. Uh, and then the community of microorganisms would come and break, break it down. And it would attract all kinds of beneficial uh, elements to the soil. And it works really good. But this is another way to do it. So what is happening here? is that we are taking the fish, which is basically proteins, amino acids, and we're inoculating it with the, micro, the indigenous microorganisms that we got from the forest in the leaf mold. And that is going to decompose and disintegrate the amino acids and the calcium in the bones and the fats in the fish. It's gonna break all that stuff down, okay? And once it's broken down, then it becomes in plant available form, all right? Because of course, contrary to some people's belief, the actual fish cannot be absorbed by the plant. No element of that can be absorbed by the plant. First, bacteria and fungi have to come in and digest it, and they don't even have mouths. So they, the bacteria fungi, they secrete digestive enzymes and dissolve the, the fish proteins and then through osmosis, uh, suck up the nourishment into their bodies. It then becomes immobilized in their bodies, in, in the bacteria and fungi. And then the protozoa comes and eats the bacteria and fungi. And then it becomes into their bodies, the proteins. And then the nematodes eat the protozoa and the arthropods eat the nematodes, protozoa, all of this. It's a complex and beautiful and wonderful web. Just multi layers upon layers that appears complex only when you try to understand it from the human perspective, but it's perfection. So let us use this type of fertilizer instead of anything chemical based and you will have tremendous results. Okay. And look, this stuff, it stores in this jar. You saw me pour it in the basement. It stores in this jar for a long time. Okay. One ounce a gallon. It's very, very powerful. All right. Uh, that's all you need. You can even do one cup to a 55 gallon barrel of water. That will still uh, be benefit because what we're doing here is we're taking and breaking down the proteins into liquid form and then dispersing them throughout the whole soil. Instead of just burying the fish, it all pretty much stays right there. So we're spreading it all throughout the soil and that's going to feed and nourish the community of microorganisms that is doing the real work for our garden. Okay. Remember, nature has already perfected this stuff millions and billions of years and eons ago. All we got to do is not work against it and work with it. Okay. This stuff is so nourishing guys. Look, it's incredible for our health as well. Not, nah, I wouldn't recommend drinking it. Although you could, it's basically fish sauce uh, that you get from like a Korean market, but I'm not drinking it. It smells awful, but there you go, guys. If you want to supercharge your plants, go to the river, catch you some fish or the pond or the ocean, put them in the bucket, add the handful of leaf mold, fill it up with water, shut the lid, let it ferment. Okay. Now, if you don't have the required uh, one to three months and beyond, I mean, the stuff you saw in my bucket was a year old. Uh, 
But if you don't have that amount of time, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make super fast fish fertilizer, fish hydrolysate, which is different than this, what we're making here. This is the best, but it takes time. It's that slow aging, you know, it's that good, it's that goodness, okay? So, all right guys, hope you got something from the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you gained something and share this video with your friends or anyone you think needs to be making their own fertilizer, okay? We don't need to be a slave to the man and go and buy all of our inputs and buy this and buy that. You don't need that, okay? Let's do it ourselves.